one is probably the easiest way, but it's not in general the way you typically run Go programs. But we can see what it's doing behind the scenes. There's a special, so if we say dash dash help or dash help, we can see, uh, uh, actually it's, there's a special flag we can use, dash work and dash x. So if we can say dash x, and we can see what it's doing. Okay. So when we ran go run dash x main.go, it tells us every step it's taking along the way. And so one of the reasons why we use the terminal so much is unlike using like a browser or a, a visual like buttons on a display, uh, the terminal is easy to use from other programs. So all the go command does is it runs other programs on your behalf. So it ran uh, it set an environment variable, and then it made make dir, like you saw. Uh, it ran that, and then it made this, and then it made this. You know, and so it's doing all these steps, right? Uh, and so actually what go run does is it creates a temporary folder uh, in here. On OS X, this is where temporary folders go, and Windows would be slightly different. But it creates that temporary folder, uh, and then runs all these commands, and then finally runs this program. Um, so, but you don't have to understand all these commands because that's not how you typically would use them, right? And so that's why we just use go run. Uh, I just wanted to show you what it was doing so you could see that. Uh, now typically what we use is go build or go install. Okay, so what go build does is you don't give it uh, the file names. It takes the current folder and all of the go files inside of that folder and uh, builds, it compiles the program. So it didn't print anything out. But if we see here, it created this hello, okay? And if you're in Windows, it'll create a hello.exe, okay? That name comes from the name of the folder where the files live. That's the name it's gonna use by default, okay? Um, and then, sorry, what? You said it should create a hello.exe if you do what, go build and ls? Just go build without any, and you need to be in the same folder. And I can run hello like that, and it's the same result, okay? So on a terminal, you can say dot slash and the executable name to execute it. So if you have multiple Go files in your folder and you run Go build, how many hellos does it make? Uh, we'll see later how other files come in, but it's, as, it's kind of like it combines all the files into one big file and then runs it, okay? It's, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's basically the idea. Uh, so you, Otherwise, you'd have to say go run main.go, another file.go, another, another file.go. You'd have to list them all otherwise. And so the go build is generally what you use uh, instead of go run. Uh, so go run is basically doing what go build is doing, and then it's just running it immediately, and then deleting the intermediate file. Okay? So go run's like, a, it's doing a little more than the go build. It's the same basic idea. Um, everybody following? That so far? Yeah, yeah. Caleb, as, as we progress, do you wish for us to use the go build as opposed to the go run, or does it yeah. make a difference? Yeah. Uh, generally, you want to use go build, and the reason why is I don't want to have to know, I don't want to have to know all the files inside of that folder. Okay. I just want to use the folder. Um, the other two commands that we, we use is go install. Okay, so what go install does, actually maybe I'll do it with the dash. Um, Okay, so go install, what it does is it builds it and puts that executable inside of go path slash bin. Okay, so um, here's hello. So when I ran go install, it ran go build and then put it here. And the cool thing about that is now I can just run hello from anywhere and it's going to call that program. Okay, I don't have to be in the same directory. Everybody following that? Okay. And so the corollary of that is, if I zoom in here, I can be in any folder and say go install and then the full path uh, to the folder. So go install example slash hello, because our, our source is in source slash example slash hello slash main.go. And so the path, the package path, is example slash hello. And I say go install that, and that does the same thing. 
So it's as if I went, you know, cd dollar go pass slash source slash examples slash hello. And then I ran go install. It's, it's doing the same thing, okay? Everybody following? Yeah, it knows that uh, examples hello uh, is in your source folder, right? It just looks at the source folder. Yeah, and it, it looks based on that path. It's just adding it to the... And so the neat thing about the tools is that they're, it's all by convention, right? And so they go to what together really well when you do it that way. Um, and then finally, there's go get. Now, we saw go get in the machine setup when we, we installed Tetris and ran it. Okay, we first did go get, which goes to GitHub, downloads the source code, then runs go build, and then puts it in the bin folder, and then we ran that program. Okay, so when we say go get, um, It's like doing the git clone and then running go install, okay? So go git uses go install, go install is doing go build. You get the idea? Okay. Yeah, that's cool. It looks like DOM now. Right? Yeah, so in typical day-to-day -day, uh, writing your code, uh, if you want to use a third-party library or package or program, you'll use go git, and then if you want to write your own program, you'll use go build. Okay. Or go install. And like I said, all go install is doing is putting the executable in the bin folder um, instead of in the current directory. Okay, so those are the go commands, and we're going to use them a lot, so you'll start to get more used to them. Uh, they're pretty simple, like they're not that hard to use. Uh, basically, the, the process is going to be write your code, run go build, and then test it to see if it did what you wanted. Okay? So, uh, to, to demonstrate what the compiler is doing, I, we're going to make one change to this file. I took out the closing parenthesis on hello world, uh, and then we're going to run go build again. Okay. So now the compiler has given us an error. Okay. So it's telling us there's something wrong with our program. And a compiler is super pedantic. Okay. It doesn't tolerate anything. So when you guys did HTML, HTML is actually pretty loose. It'll let you get away with a lot. But a compiler from those programming languages does not let you get away with anything, right? And so it's telling me, you know, unexpected semicolon or new line expecting a closing parenthesis. So when I did this and I removed it, I broke the program. I save it again, rerun it, and now it's okay, okay? Um, so this is the, the basic process. I make changes, I run go build, it tells me if I broke something, I fix what I broke until I get it working, and then I can test my program. Um, every fall in the basic process. And that's, that's the same in, mo in most compiled programming languages, that basic process of write my code, build, test it, okay? Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this actual program, and we'll use this as our like, first Go program to try and understand like, the way Go looks and, and the syntax and that kind of stuff. Okay, so every Go program starts with a package main, or a package in the name of the package. There's two types of packages. There's main packages which create those executables, like we saw. And then there's other packages which can be used by them. Okay, and we'll see more of those later. Um, but every Go program has to start with this package line. So every Go source code file, anything that ends with .go, has to have this package line. Um, and like I said, if we're creating a command line application, we use main as the name of the package. And then after your package declaration, you have an import statement, which is how we use code from other packages. And we're using a package called FMT. Notice that we have to have double quotes, okay? This is a string. Everybody know what a string is? You guys are completely new programming. You probably don't know what a string is. It's like a name. Uh, yeah, so a string is like a series of characters, okay? And so the characters here are FMT. The quotes are not included as part of the string. They're just like marcating the string. It's telling you where the string is. So everything inside of the quotes is the string. Okay, so there is a package called FMT which stands for format, inside of Go that we're important. Okay. So notice that package main, main doesn't have quotes around it, but package import FMT does have the quotes around it. That's kind of a slight distinction there. Okay, after we do our imports, then we can create functions and some other things that we'll look at in a second. And uh, the function we're creating is called main. This is the entry point for our program. This is the program, this is what, what it's gonna run when we run our program. Okay. The very first 
function. Um, and so it's called main, and that comes from the C. Uh, if you use C, that's what they call main. Uh, so it's the same idea. Sorry, what? Yeah. Um, notice it doesn't take any arg arguments uh, in C that would, it doesn't return anything. Uh, and then we run our code. So our code happens between the curly braces, right? Um, and that is also from the C family languages, that the curly brace style. Uh, and then inside we have fmt.printline. So th this stands, or print LA, which stands for print line. And that's what's resulting in the text that we send it being put into the terminal. So recognize here another string, right? Hello world. So we could change it, hello world to, okay? So what is this going to print out? Following. Mm -hmm. And the reason it changed it is because I changed the string. Okay? Now they have to be inside of there. I couldn't do this, right? But it, you couldn't even, you don't have two files separately, right? You just saved over that same file. Yeah, I'm just saving the same file over and over again. Um, like, this is a, a bug. And the nice thing about Adam is it's telling me before I even run it. But if I ran this, it's going to tell me that's not a valid program. The, all the characters have to be inside the string, okay? But, but that's the, so we're calling a function, defining that package, we're passing in an argument, and that's how we're, uh, that's how we're printing things out to the string, okay? Um, so the things that matter here, first of all, notice that uh, there's a thing we call white space. White space is the part of the program that you can't see, okay? So white space is space characters. Uh, I have on, on my editor enabled they're like little dots, gray dots, but they're not actually, they're just space characters. So when you hit space bar. Um, new lines, so when you hit enter, that creates a new line. Uh, tab characters, so if you hit tab to indent code, uh, those are all white space, okay, because they're transparent. Most of the time, white space doesn't matter. You can, like, I can save this program uh, like this, and that would be fine. It's not going to change the behavior of the program at all. It's going to work exactly the same way. The white space is really there for your own benefit. Um, but there are a few places where it does matter. So inside of a string, it's going to matter because all these space characters I just added to the string are part of that string. Okay. So th this is different than this. Okay. Uh, so it matters there. There's a places where you have to have a new line that it matters, um, and, and some other places. But in general, white space is, is for your benefit. Okay. It's to help you as a programmer lay out your code so it's easier to read. You don't want to like put all your code on one line because that's hard to read. But the compiler doesn't care. How do you make those errors? Uh, it's a setting in the editor. You can enable it. You know, preferences. Uh, uh, show invisibles. Okay. It's sometimes helpful because it's hard to tell the difference between a tab and a space, right? Because <laughs> it's white space, you can't see it. Okay. Um, so that, that's our Hello World program, and that's what the basic structure of a Go program. You have your package, you have your imports, then you have a function main, and then you uh, have a bunch of, and these are called statements, okay? So each time we have a statement, each time we have a new line, it's a statement. So let's look at another <laughs> statement, right? So now I created another statement, the next line. Uh, notice another difference between some other programming languages, no semicolons, okay? It's just the that. So what is this program going to do? Right. Hello world and then hello world too. Right. Uh, because I ran it twice. So I have a series of statements and I can have tons of them, you know. I can, I can have a hundred of them, right. I can just keep doing that. Um, and, and it would print all, all that a lot, right. So, you know. Does it matter whether we use a single quote or double quote? It does matter. So in Go, a string is always double quotes. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a special kind of string called a raw string where you can do it this way with the back ticks, which is above the tilde, which is below the tilde. <laughs> uh, but, it, but you can't use single quotes. A uh, single quote is a character. It's one character, right? So if, 
skip it. I can show you that real quick. Well, we'll you see later why it printed 120, because that seems odd, right? I, I put in the single quotes X, and it printed 120. We'll, we'll see later why it did that. Uh, but you can't do this, right? Missing, it can only be one character. So you have to use double quotes. Okay. So that's different than JavaScript and PHP, and what most scripting languages let you do anything. Uh, you have to use double quotes. Any questions so far? Um, yeah. Uh, when I run, uh, run main.go, I get the both lines. But if I just say hello, I get the old. That's right.